Um, so today I'm going to be talking a bit about some of the tools we've been putting together to get a handle on our disk usage with NCI. Um, so as you know, NCI will be moving to their new supercomputer, Guardi, in a couple months now. Um, and that's going to be bring about some changes in how storage is managed um, for the centre. So the few big changes that we have is there's going to be no um, short drive. That means all our current allocations on short will go away. Um, or any files stored on short won't be accessible after Guardi, after January rather. Um, so file, files will still be accessible, um, but not writable. So you can copy stuff off of writing short up until the end of January. Um, but beyond that, there will be no short drive. Uh, the global storage, GData, and the tape storage, MDSS, will stay the same. We don't have to worry about those. Um, there's going to be a new scratch space. It's going to replace short um, files loaded on that scratch space will be automatically deleted after some period of time. Uh, but NCI have to advise us on what that's going to be. So it could be a month, it could be 90 days, something along with that timeline. Um, so output from a model run can be can be put on the scratch space, um, but it will be automatically deleted if you don't do anything in that uh, 30 to 90 day period, or whatever it is. Um, because we no longer have the uh, short space at NCI, we're going to lose fair bit of quota. Um, so we're going to be, have to clean up some of our storage space. Um, Claire's emails have had the exact number. Is it a few hundred gigabytes right, Claire? Uh, we still have to clean up 160 terabytes. 160 terabytes. So we've got a lot of data to clean up. Um, so hopefully some of these tools will help us do that. Um, so that's throughout the centre, throughout all of our users. Um, so the in impact on individual users might not be as large as that, but we do have to uh, quite dramatically cut down on our storage use. Um, so a brief rundown of what we've done. Hi, Carl, it's Robin Bowen here. Hi. Could I just, sorry, maybe I mis misunderstood you, but in theory, Projects will now have more disk space overall. The problem that projects will have is that there will that some that, are, that there will be a very big disk space on slash scratch, which will be time limited, and the current quotas on G data, which uh, will not be time limited, and you and the users will need to be very careful about targeting their storage on GData for, for longer term storage. So that whereas now nobody's worried where they put it because everything was unlimited, in future users really have to be very careful about whether they're time limited storage on Scratch or unlimited storage on GData. Yeah, thanks a lot Robert, that's something I missed. Just um, is going to have a much increased store, uh, quota. Um, so you can store a lot of data on it, but you'll have that restriction that it's going to be deleted after some period of time. Um, so yeah, we, we, we will have more space all up. It's just some of it uh, we're not able to use for long-term archive of data. Um, so covering the things we covered previously um, in our sort of storage notices. Um, there's a few things we want to be able to clean up. Stuff like old log files that we're not going to look at anymore, the past runs, any model runs that we just test and don't really need the output from, um, any model runs that have failed. Um, so if you're not going to use that failed run for a publication or anything, read and delete it, and data that's been archived elsewhere. So if you've copied stuff to your 
university surveys for it. It's been published um, on the NCI publication area. Um, you can clean up the old stuff on technology data. Um, of course, there's also a lot of stuff we have to keep. We can't just wipe away everything. Obviously, data that's awaiting publication needs to stay. The data that's been used in your PhD or master's thesis has to keep, be kept around for some period of time, depending on the institution's guidelines, as well as data that's just plain expensive or time consuming to recreate. Um, so we don't want to clear up, clear up all of our space and spend lots of compute time on guarding, trying to recreate everything we've gotten rid of. If it's something quick to create, on the other hand, um, you can clean up that data and then just recreate that data by running your save model configuration or whatever fairly quickly. Um, so today I'm going to be looking at a couple of things to find out the question where my data is um, at NCI because a lot of us have been around for a few years. We've got data squirreled away here, there and everywhere. Um, so we're trying to make it a bit simpler for people to track down. Um, so we've got two things I'm going to show you today. We've got our Grafana website. So this is a plot that shows um, storage use over time and compute use over time which has been extracted from NCI's um, NCI account and short files report type tools, uh, which shows how much data you have and what projects it's under. And we also got this command line cook tool called Duskle, uh, which allows you to search through files at NCI according to some constraints, um, basically like find, but instead of going through the file system it's got a database back in, so it works a bit faster. Um, so let's start up with a uh, bit of Grafana. Uh, so, just have to reshare the screen. Um, so this is an open source tool we've installed at NCI. Uh, you can find it at accessdev.nci.org.au slash grafana uh, with an F instead of a PH. Um, you can log on with your NCI account. So just share the login. Um, so this is just with your NCI account. Um, um, so in Grafana, we have a whole bunch of dashboards. Um, so we have things like uh, this Duskle report dashboard is giving a view of all spaces Clex own. Um, so we're only looking here at Clex's spaces which are HH5, W35, W40, 42, etc. Uh, we're not monitoring any space that we don't own. Um, so we can see here that currently the center has one petabyte of storage space uh, in use and about 28 million files. Um, and we can see this graph is showing that data bin by age. So we have files been uh, created within one month of now. So this green bar, and then one month to six months, six months to one year, 
one to three years and older than three years. Let's just see um, how old the files we have are. Um, we've also got usage by group. You can see at the moment, HA5 is where the majority of our storage use is. That's the school section down the bottom here. Um, the 45 second up. Uh, we've got usage by user, so you can see um, who's using those individual spaces. And also by the root path, so whether it's in G data V45 or short V45. Um, and all of these you can change the time basis on over here. So we're seeing the last 30 days. Um, you can change that to the last 90 days, stuff like that, see trends over time. Scott, I don't know if um, if everyone else has the same problem, but in, in, in our screen on the top right hand corner, um, oh, it's here. Um, oh, it's, I can get rid of that. Yeah. Oh, cool. Sorry, I couldn't see the the thing you were clicking. Oh, I thought it was yeah, there's there's just a button up the top right that says last yeah, it's days. We change that to last ninety days. That's all that is. So this is an overview of the whole centre. Um, so for individual people, that might not be as useful, it might be more useful for people who are managing their projects. Um, we've also got, if I go on to the top left here, I find a different project. You might not see all of these paid and set permissions so that only a couple of these are visible, so you don't have to um, you can see individual users' reports as well. So if I myself wanted to uh, look at this data from me, I would go and put my user ID, which is SAW5 uh, into the box here. Uh, likewise, I can check all my groups. So if I only wanted to see W35, that's my main project. So. Um, not much changes, but we could go W40 easily. Just W40. And you can see I put in about 700 gigabytes over the last couple of days into W40, which we'll get to when I clean it up. So that's all. So we've got um, for storage, the same sort of thing I was showing before. We've got by age. I've created a lot of um, data recently, the past um, couple of weeks for a project I've been working on. Um, otherwise, the data is fairly constant over for the older files. Um, by group, it's been mostly in W35, a bit in W40. See in the root path. I've got a lot of data in uh, G data W35, about say four terabytes maybe. I'm fairly flat with a bit of an uptick. I've added a lot to the W35 short space. So if I wanted to clean up some of my data, which I do, I would be particularly looking at these newer files that I've created in the last week. There's a lot of those have been test runs while I try to get this big job running, which I don't really need to keep the data of. Um, and I can also clean up that uptick in W40, which was used by ran out of compute time at W35. Um, so again, that's test jobs, so I can go in and clean that up. Um, so that's the sort of thing you, you're discovering here. Um, where data's grown, what group it's going in, um, the root path, so whether it's in G data or short. And we've also got some plots of SU inside account, which you can use to see if uh, you or someone else in your group has increased in storage a lot. Um, one last thing I'll show here is the project usage report. Um, so this is um, a single project's uh, usage information. It's defaulting to V45, which is the Oceans project. And this is just showing the usage 
Oh no, it's, I think it's because there's, there's no GDATA 1A storage. You can see the storage oh. points selectable as well. Um, it, it might be also useful just to show people that you can click on, say, an individual name in there and it will just show plot for that person in the, in the legend. Which is quite cool if you just want to select out one person and just click it again to make it go away. That's <laughs> a bit of light shaming. We can see that this person happens to be using about half a terabyte in the <laughs> image. Um, you can also check the inode storage um, and compute time. This compute time is broken down by um, Q, which these people are using. You can check if someone's using lots of the Express Q, for instance, which means they're spending more SU, as well as the compute usage by user. So it's also worth pointing out that when you hover over the plot, um, it, it, it's showing you the usage at that point. So it's not quite the same as, as the legend on the right. Um, and, it, and you can identify um, where you're hovering over because it's, um, it comes up in bold, for example, huge men in that case. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you can go along and like the other graph, you can pick on an individual uh, thing to just bring that up. Um, if you don't like these stacked plots, for instance. Um, so this is intended just to give you to give everyone in the centre an overview of where um, our resources are being used. Um, and that you can use as a basis for cleaning up your own usage. And if we go back to my thing. Now let's say I want to actually go about cleaning up this data. I want to know where it actually is on the NCI file system. So to you, do that, I'm going to use this Duskal tool to take a look at that. So remembering I want to find files made within the last few weeks um, and that are within the short W35 and short W40. How can I do that? Let me just reset my share to the next screen. Okay. So now I'm on a terminal on right here. Um, so to use this Duskal tool, we need to load the unstable version of our hundred files. As always, that's going to be module use g data hh5 public modules. And we'll go module load conda. And now this is three unstable. The unstable is where we put the new stuff. Um, every NCI maintenance, the unstable, old unstable version becomes the new stable version. Um, so we'll probably be doing that this week, actually. Um, but I've loaded this specific module in our HH5 public module space, and I had access to Duskal. It's just a smart mic tool. Um, there's a couple of different options it gives you. You can use Find, which works much like the normal Find command. There's DU, which works much like the normal D. And MCDU. So let's go to uh, my short space in W35. Short W35. Um, I've changed the name of this to make sure no one's using my space. test from the end. So we can say Duskal DU of the current directory. 
what's that's doing is it's going up to a database running in NCLI's cloud, counting all the files in my home directory, uh, in my short directory rather. Um, a couple things to note here is that this will only work for the CLEX storage spaces. It will only work for W35, V45, W40, etc., as well as HH5. Um, you have to be within one of those groups to be able to use this tool. Um, just the, you know, we really want to broadcast everything we have to everyone on NCI. Um, but yeah. Oh, and it's also only updated overnight. So stuff you've done, if you delete a lot of data um, today, it's not going to show up until you know, the next day. Just like how short files report reports. Um, so I've checked the usage of the current path. You can see I've got um, half a terabyte or so of data on short. Um, and about 120,000 files. Um, the file count is important because NCI also set a quota on how many files you can put on the file system. Uh, this is because if you have a huge number of files, it slows down the file system itself. Um, so NCI prefer you don't just keep tons and tons of tiny little files. It slows down the file system. Um, I'm not going to run the find on this path just because it's going to find um, 120 odd thousand files, which isn't going to be too useful for us. Um, but the other tool is the um, So this is based on another program called NCDU. Um, and this is, allows you to have an interactive search for the file system. So I can see where all the storage is within each of the directories. Um, of this directory. So I can see most of those 120,000 are in my scratch directory. Most of the storage is under there too. And I've also got a lot of these other projects and various bits and bobs that I've used as well. Um, so now, I wanted to find stuff in my short directory that was uh, newer than a couple weeks. So to do that, I'm going to use some of the filters we have available. So if we go help, it should tell us a bit about those. Okay. So there's a couple arguments we can add to uh, any of these commands, the ncdu, the find, and the du. We can search for specific groups, specific users, um, the modifier time, so when the file was last changed, and the file size. So say, for instance, I want to find all of those files that are newer, newer than one week old. So I would say find in this directory with M time newer than 14 days, for instance. Um, this is using pandas behind the scenes, so any pandas compatible um, time interval should work. So now this is showing us lots of zeros. But we have a gigabyte, because I actually have already cleaned up some of that storage. Like I said, if you've cleaned up the storage today, it's not going to show up. Um, but we've got a gigabyte under here. It's loading each of these directories from that database. And within my scratch space, uh, most of the files have been in my help desk folder, a few in the Jenkins folder. Um, and we can see that those files are from Helping Charlotte. So that lets you filter by different ways. Here I've gone and listed the whole of W35. This will be everyone's space that is newer than uh, 14 days old, which is just going to take a while to load. 
One thing is if someone has a huge amount of files, um, it's going to time out trying to query that database just because the server we're running it on is a bit small. Uh, we're planning to expand that a bit. But you can see sometimes these question marks show up. That just means there's too much data for the, hand, for the thing to handle. If you go into a subdirectory, um, you should find actual counts. Just get out of this. Just going to background it and kill it because it's not responding. Oops, too simple. Um, right, so there's not just time, we can search for a specific user. Uh, 562. If I search for files owned by myself in my own short directory, um, that's not going to be too helpful. So what I can do is search for files that aren't owned by myself, uh, which can spot um, quite a things happening. So here I've got a few files that are in my short directory that aren't owned by myself. So stuff in this PyU directory. This is from the Access Earth system model. Some stuff in my Scratch directory is owned by... Um, not me. Um, so you can go through these different filters and just in your notebook write down where where things are you have to clean up. So for instance, I might want to go and work out what all these files are that aren't owned by myself and ask whoever created them to clean them up um, out of my space. Uh, we can also see files that are all, so if mtime was before seven years ago, say. So these would be really old files. So let's see what we find here, if we have any files. So we do have some files that are older than seven years um, on the space. Um, so that isn't necessarily accurate, because a lot of the times what these really, really old files will be is stuff from tarballs where the file inside the tarball has a very old date. So let's go down in here a bit. This is back in the directory. So we can see here there's files within the wharf source directory um, which are older than seven years old, which doesn't necessarily mean I created them seven years ago. That's just how they were given to me. Um, and if we wanted to print those actual paths to those files, uh, we have the find command again. And we can use size, size greater than, say, 100 gigabytes. Well, I've only got one file greater than 100 gigabytes in this directory. Um, we could just as easily go to, um, say, my other home short directory. This is what I'm using at the moment. And run it in there. Let's see if it can find any really big files. There might be. So under this directory, I've got a bunch of big files. Um, which I might want to clean up because a lot of these are temporary files. Um, so you could, say, grab all the paths from this, check them over, and then pipe them into a command that removes each of these really old files. Um, so like exiles rm will remove each of these files. Uh, these ones are already deleted. We did get this one. Um, so, yeah, that's some tools for searching through um, and finding where files are that you might want to be um, deleting. At the moment, this is all just for the Clex storage areas, um, just because this was sort of thrown together a bit, just to help us with the transition from Guardi. Um, yes, Aidan? Um, can, 
can you combine the time filters to give you something older than a certain age, younger than a... Oh, sorry, old. At the moment, it will only take one filter at a time. So if there are things like that that you'd want to be able to do, uh, you can always send us an email um, and we can look at adding that functionality. Uh, because it's got a database behind the scenes, it's fairly easy to add new constraints and filters for us. Um, it's just a matter of knowing what good constraints and filters to use might be. But yeah, hopefully some of those will be useful in finding out space um, that we on the Clex storage spaces at NCI uh, that it'd be helpful to clean up. As Claire said, we're looking at uh, 160 terabytes of stuff or so that we'd like to be able to free up before Guardi comes online. Uh, were there any other questions from people? And I just want to say, uh, yeah, don't hesitate to ask us or your questions uh, when you're cleaning up, if you have anything you're not sure, even if you're not sure whether you should keep it or not keep it, we can usually know for you or um, we can also tell you if you, if you don't, if you want to archive something and you don't have enough storage on tape, there is more storage available for tape, so we can give more storage there. Uh, and anything. Yeah, and Claire also sent around um, in the email reminder for this talk, Aiden's blog post on how to compress your data. Compression is also a really good way to reduce the sizes of the storage on the disk. So. Okay. Um, Claire, sorry, Andreas here had a question about OM. Um, I vaguely remember that you had to actually copy the content of OM. Um, but I couldn't okay. find the reference. It, it's not decided yet. Uh, it will, uh, so it's not decided yet whether NCI is going to copy your home for you or whether it will be the users to copy the home. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll, we'll tell you when we know. Uh, in either case, uh, home is backed up. So uh, NCI will always have the backup of home for a long time. So if you're not around when you when you have to to move the home, don't worry about it. Uh, you will be always able to contact NCI and ask uh, for your home back. Okay. If there's no more questions, um, thanks everyone for dialing in. You can always ask us questions at cws underscore help at nci.org.au or in person if you go to one of our rooms, we're happy to help out. Um, more information and the video from this will be on our wiki and we'll send around a link to that so you can find all of these tools and the websites for and instructions for each of them. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.